that was Katie Razzle reporting. The Times columnist and devoted Rick Mail fan Kathleen Moran is here. What was his appeal? Well, I started watching him when I was 10, and uh, I think there was something incredibly... I mean, what I, what I connected to was he was incredibly childlike. If you look at everything that he's doing, it's that, that state of hyper-energy and unselfconsciousness that you have when you're a 10-year-old kid, and you run in the room and you're screaming, and then you're just upside down, shouting rude words, and you're in love with rude words. There's nothing funnier or cleverer than using a rude word at that age. And he still had that as a 20-year-old and a 30-year-old and a 40-year-old. It's that childish kind of, I'm alive, I've got a face, I can say the word poo. <laughs> Uh, he is billed as an alternative comedian. Alternative to what? Well, the main thing I get when I watch him is that, uh, first of all, there's an amazing intelligence there. I mean, I think there's this thing, that there's, there's a saying about how comedy is what you have when you've got intelligence left to burn. And, you know, obviously we know him for sort of silly faces and, and saying poo a lot. But, I mean, things like Bottom was actually based on Waiting for Godot. Him and Aid Edmondson had, had been in Waiting for Godot uh, in theatre. And they were like, what if we did a version of this? that was ruder and sillier and funnier. So it was this excess of energy. He was, he was constantly on fire. Like, you watch the way that... I mean, I think one of the greatest cameos that we've ever had on British television in a sitcom is his Lord Flash Art in Blackadder. Uh, you know, he bursts through that doors. Yeah, Apparently, sure in the run-through, he didn't do that at all. He just walked through all of his blocking and stuff. And then when they went for the take, he just explodes through those doors. And you watch the cast who are there, which Miranda Richardson, Stephen Fry, Rowan Atkinson, and they don't know what hit them. I mean, you watch their reaction shots to that, and they're like, what is going on here and if you ask people about Blackadder people think that Rick was in that and he was like one of the main characters but it was in that series for less than five minutes but it makes such an impact and there was an interesting conversation on Facebook going on about him about how different he was to most British comedians he does a thing that a lot of American comedians do comedians like Black, um, uh, Jack Black or John Belushi where it's you come in the room and you own it it's like what are you gonna do let's play what Chris Rock does as well usually British comedy is much more kind of character fall or kind of you know sort of like playing with words and stuff and he could do that as well but he came in and he was a rock star he owned the room and that time that he appeared and that school of comedy appeared the 1980s this is um you know it was a pretty tough time otherwise wasn't it well, he was great for that. I mean, in the young ones where he plays, I mean, it's very difficult now. You know, and I speak as someone who likes to be funny but also likes to write about politics. It's very difficult to, to write about sort of politics and try and be sort of honest and passionate about it without sounding like Rick did in the young ones. Just that kind of, you know, just like down with Thatcher's junta, kind of like, uh, you know, that child, like I've got some great dungarees on. You do, you know, it's very often when I watch people talking about young people, particularly talking about politics, you're just like, you need to watch the young ones. You're making some fundamental mistakes here. You are just, but he, you know, he, he but the, the naive that he um, that he had in that as well because alternative comedy uh, at, at that time and people would say what is that the alternative to and again it was this childlike sort of perpetually teenage view of the world that we hadn't had before you know he was it, yeah he was he was just perpetually astonished by the world and I've never seen anybody enjoy having a face more than Rick Mail did if you watch what he did with his face he was actually a very beautiful man in repose um, but he was completely egoless about it he would gurn and he would clown and he would throw himself on the floor and make himself look as ugly as possible and he always seemed to have about five more muscles than any other person in and his it face. was young people speaking to young people wasn't it well that's the th well, sitting on Twitter today like I've sort of watched a lot of celebrity deaths happen on Twitter like you know Amy Winehouse or you know, Michael Jackson or Elizabeth Taylor. I've never seen more of an outpouring of love for any celebrity than I've seen for Rick Mayle. Everyone was posting their favourite clips and it was across it was his entire career. They either loved him from The Young Ones or from Bottom, Filthy Rich and Cat Flap, Jack and Ori, which he was amazing in, Drop Dead Fred. And it's because we watched him when we were kids and you saw someone like you on television. You were like, that's exactly what I would do if I was on television. I would smash a television over someone's head and I would say the word poo and I would gurn as much as possible and it explode. Do you think, I mean, I mean who are his heirs? God, in terms... I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, in terms of charisma, I mean, you watch someone... That's very difficult. I mean, the childlikeness, the childlike quality that Eddie Izzard brings to stuff and that kind of rock and roll thing, I guess. Um, I don't know, really. It was odd, because his career was cut short. He kind of... We thought he was going to go off and be a big Hollywood star when he did Drop Dead Fred, and then that all stopped after that, which, again, I think was part of the reason why people loved him so much and took it very personally when they heard that he died today, because he was still our little British secret. If you talk to Americans about him, they're like, who? And you start trying to explain it to them, they're like, I don't get it. There is an amazing warmth towards him. Yes. 
Well, again, if you were a kid watching that, you know, you, you're watching, you know, it was one of the programmes you weren't allowed to watch, The Young Ones, you certainly weren't allowed to watch Bottom. So when you sort of sneak up and watch it and you're sitting there and this is kind of your secret and you, you feel the kindred spirit there when you're watching it. And for me, he was a massive role model, you know, as a sort of gonky teenage adolescent girl to watch um, him and Aid Edmondson in Bottom talking about girls uh, and talking about how they'd be in the world. They're complete outsiders and loners, but they love each other. And I was like, that's actually an emulatable role model in a way that the girls on Sweet Valley High are in Dynasty or not. Mm. Catherine, thanks.